is all these things that you cannot handle on a purely domestic basis. And I think it was the recognition that by being together, we are stronger. Uh, by dealing with those cross-border issues. You know, you don't stop a pandemics because you, you set up a wall or you, or you have a border. Uh, you don't stop a financial crisis only at home. It requires a, co a collective approach. Uh, you don't deal with terrorism with your exclusive intelligence services. You need to exchange with all the other countries. So I, I think in that respect, Europe is, is, is an extraordinary construction and needs to be developed further. Do you worry about the world economy being at a cusp so that actually we could see a, we could see a recession m much quicker than we think it is coming? You know, informed by my IMF background, I can tell you that it is not in the baseline to have a recession. Um, that said, it's uh, mediocre growth. Uh, it's uh, at risk because of essentially one major threat, which is you know the trade, um, the trade war that we see uh, either developing or, or brewing, uh, and the uncertainty that it generates for investors and for anybody making economic decisions. That's you know not to mention the. Um, what I think Mark Carney called the tragedy of the horizon, which is the climate change impact on our societies and our economies uh, that requires action now, but will produce effects later on. But, do, do you see commonality in leaders, or do you worry that actually leaders don't have a common objective? And, and what kind of well, world you know, does that give us? I think I, I'm yet to meet a leader or a prime minister or um, a finance minister who says, I don't want sustainable growth, thank you very much. So that should be their common uh, objective. How they reallocate, how they distribute, how they deal with uh, inequality is, is a matter for them to decide. Uh, but growth in and of itself, sustainable growth, uh, is, is something that should be desirable for all of them. Um, and by sustainable, I mean, you know, in compliance and respect with the survival of our planet and the respect of the environment. So at least with that common goal, they should move forward together on certain key components. But if we were to have a crisis or something ugly, would world leaders be able to sign the Plaza Accord like, like they did back then? Would you have all the biggest players at the table ready you know, to if, work if we were You know, if we were back in a sort of two, late 2008, early 2009 situation, there's no doubt in my mind that leaders would come together yet again, yes. No but doubt. I really hope that it doesn't happen because to have, uh, you know, as cataclysmic a threat as we had in those days uh, shouldn't happen again. Uh, we talk about a possible um, Trump administration intervention on the dollar. Is that a worrying signal? That, you know, something that was maybe unthinkable a couple of years ago is now something that's openly talked about. You know, I don't want to um, state any policy or any, any direction in terms of monetary policy going forward. But there are and there have been changes that clearly um, question the traditional way of thinking about monetary policy. Um, I certainly would hope that the commitment made by the G20 leaders as early as 2008 and repeated ever since not to adopt any protective measures uh, would be sustained and would be uh, reaffirmed.